here today at Hope Technology. Now, Paul, you've been speaking and discussing the Brother Speedio R650X1. Now, what have you learned about this machine? Uh, this is an incredible machine, uh, pretty new to the Brother portfolio. In fact, they've got two machines that they've bought here in the last 18 months or so. Uh, the main reason behind the purchase is to improve their productivity, to make their parts faster. It's a BT30 machine and it replaced a, another twin pallet machine which was actually uh, a BT40 machine. So essentially they didn't need the BT40, they've got a BT30 but they're getting significant productivity gains. Let's have a look at one of the parts here. Paul was telling me about this. Now this particular component here is actually made, uh, the first operation is machined on a five axis machining centre. And then what it does is it's transferred to the brother Speedio here uh, on the three on a fixture. And the idea is that they're doing kind of the finishing off here, but they're using this machine because it's far quicker to do that finish off. Now, admittedly, you know, they're not removing significant amounts of material here, but what they are doing is getting the part off, uh, I think it's uh, a third quicker than they were before with things like improved surface finish, maintaining accuracies, all as a, as a result of this machine. Now, with the twin pallets, Paul, like, with, with fifth axis machining, you've always got that sixth edge that needs removing. So, effectively, they're using a twin pallet vertical to do this. How did they use to manufacture them before? And what time savings are they actually getting? Well, I don't know it, the finite detail of how they were doing it before, but what I can tell you is that the machine that was making that part as a five axis machine, it was too big an animal to actually take on the finishing operation. Why use up that machine? when you've got something that's faster in a smaller footprint to do uh, the finishing job. In answer to your question, it was 32 minutes that part, now down to 19 uh, compared to the previous, uh, the previous way they were manufacturing it. Um, some of the reasons between the, the, the increase in the, uh, or the, um, the reduction of the cycle time, firstly, this machine's now got a faster spindle. It's got a 16,000 RPM spindle. They can machine the, uh, the aluminium that they're doing here uh, around about 30 metres a minute feed rate, whereas before they were doing it at 10 metres a minute. So you can see there, with those two factors, much faster rapids as well, you've got a, you know, a potential to significantly improve your, your cycle time. And when you're moving from point to point on a part, you're doing, uh, they're doing contour machining, 3D facing on the, or 3D machining on this. Obviously that all helps when you've got a faster machine. Now what about the accuracy? This is one of the most critical components they're manufacturing here at Hope Technology. So what tolerances are they holding and what kind of repeatability are they getting? We're talking about five microns here, um, repeatability on this, which, okay, you know, you, I kind of questioned, but well, this is just a part for a bike. You know, when, you, when I ride my bike, do I think all the parts on the bike are, are made to those tolerances? But of course, if you make a part to a tighter to tolerance, when you're talking about the seals within it, two components going together, you're going to get much better longevity out of that part uh, on your bike than you would if it was, you know, loosely tolerance. And this machine is coping with that fantastically. Well, I've been looking at the second machine that's over here, Paul. Now, they're making a, yet another critical component on this machine. Now, this is part of the gear assembly. Now, again, very tight tolerances. Now, what can you tell me about how they're manufacturing this particular component? Well, by the looks of it, this is done in two operations. Again, you, you've got the uh, first machine in um, uh, process here which is done out of a was done out of a billet and then uh, it's turned over and then the second operation is done on the other on the other fixture the total cycle time for the machine in this is 45 minutes and obviously you're doing uh, both operations at once here so again what I mean, but what a fabulous part here 45 minutes as well it's quite incredible isn't it 45 minutes and when when one side of the pallet is machining the other side's being loaded so it's absolutely fantastic what really struck me Paul about a twin pallet vertical is that your footprint yeah, I, I mean, that, that, that is all. We can open this door, I believe. It's actually machining, but actually, I might just shut that just in case. But uh, yeah, th this is a twin pallet machine. It's a much smaller footprint, which was part of their selection process as well. They wanted a, as many spindles, as many opportunities to machine parts in a small area as they could. So this fitted perfectly in there. These machines are also extremely economical these days. In fact, this machine and the other one is 30% more efficient on power consumption than previous machines, so there's a saving there. So not only are you getting the part off quicker, not only are you getting a better surface finish, because we haven't talked about that, the surface finish that comes off of these machines as a result of the uh, big plus spindle, the spindle face and taper, means you've got a much better contact with a spindle, which means that when you're, when you're looking to uh, get a better surface finish, you've got the maximum rigidity. And the fact you've got through tool coolant as well, 
means you do get a better surface finish. So you get a better surface finish, a, a more accurate component, a more economical machine, so it uses less power. It's a win-win all round. Other points as well, the control, it holds far more storage in its memory than it used to, so all of their programs can be accommodated in the machine. So you start to hear all of, all of these points and you think, hang on a minute, you know, you can see uh, the reasons why they've invested in not just one, but two of these machines. I think they're very savvy here at Hope Technology. They're excellent engineers, and I've also seen how they've actually also adapted the machine bed. So they've eliminated the, the, the dead zone in the, in the machine um, so that they can use stubbier tools, uh, again, to get, uh, have more rigidity and better surface finish. I, I know it seems like we're going backwards and forwards, but for the camera's point of view here, you can see what Gio's talking about. You just explain that because you've got to... So in regards to this riser block here, um, that's eliminating the Z zone. So if the riser block wasn't there, the tools would have to have been sticking out of the tool holders a lot further to get down to the component. So the machine has got sufficient Z axis stroke um, but they've, they've written the old um, fixture, if you like, or the old bed, actually, if you like, so that the tools can be a lot stubbier and obviously better surface finish, but also faster feeds and speeds, better tool life. I, and not just better tool life, I think better machine wear, because, you know, when a spindle, if a, sp if a tool's in a, a, you know, exposed longer in a spindle, the inertia on the spindle, so you get better spindle wear or, or longer spindle life, better tool life, and like you say, better surface finish on the part. Another thing while you saw in there, what about that coolant flood wash as well? With the through spindle coolant, the way they're trying to remove swarf on these machines is obviously critical because uh, when you're machining at 16,000 RPM, 30 meters a minute, okay, admittedly again here, they're not uh, taking massive depths of cut, but you can do that with these machines. You'll need to get rid of that. You'll need to get rid of that swarf. Uh, final point from me on this as well is I think they used to have 14, um, or I think 14 or 16 tools on these machines, they've now got 22. So you've opened up, um, you've got a lot more tool stations to store your tools for your, you know, so you don't have to keep changing them through cycle. BT30, is it the new BT40? I don't know, Paul. And the final point from me is, is really that I absolutely love the fixturing that they do here. They use all the best tooling. And I think that this is a, is, is a, a perfect example of every aspect of engineering from work holding, tooling, tool holders, programming and the pro let me summarize really the final point from me tell me about the programming that you know the complex parts how have they adapted well they do do a lot of their their programming offline but they do say that the new brother um, control here is far easier to use it's a great interface it's, it's got a lot more memory as I said earlier and the processing speed of this control is something else too you need that if you've got a machine that's hopping from point to point Okay, the hardware might be able to handle it, but what about the software? You need you need that collaboration between the two, and with the brother machines, you've you've certainly got that you know in an in abundance. So I think they've made a good selection here at Hope Technology. It's been a fascinating review into what they're doing. I think um, we'll be seeing a lot more of these machines in the future.